Let's begin at the end. For most people, the scariest thing about death isn't being dead; it's dying, suffering. It's a key distinction. And to get underneath this, it can be very helpful to tease out suffering, which is necessary as it is, from suffering we can change. It can be really good to realize forces larger than ourselves. Now, another great thing about necessary suffering is that it is the very thing that unites caregiver and care receiver. This we are finally realizing is where healing happens. How we die is indeed something we can affect. Palliative care, very important field, but poorly understood. While it includes, it is not limited to end-of-life care. It is not limited to hospice. It's simply about comfort and living well at any stage. Please know that you don't have to be dying anytime soon to benefit from palliative care. Flash forward. Now I work at a, an amazing place in San Francisco called the Zen Hospice Project, where we have a little ritual that helps with this shift in perspective. When one of our residents dies, the mortuary men come, and as we're wheeling the body out through the garden, heading for the gate, we pause. Anyone who wants. Share a story or a song or silence, as we sprinkle the body with flower petals.、It、takes a few minutes. It's a sweet, simple parting image to usher in grief with warmth, rather than repugnance. Contrast that with the typical experience in the hospital setting: beeping machines and blinking lights that don't stop. Cleaning crew swoops in, the body's whisked away. It's all. Feels as though that person had never really existed. Well intended, of course, in the name of sterility, but hospitals tend to assault our senses, and the most we might hope for within those walls is numbness, anesthetic, literally the opposite of aesthetic. I revere hospitals for what they can do. I am alive because of them, but we ask too much of our hospitals. They are places for acute trauma and treatable illness. They're no place to live and die. That's not what they were designed for. We know, for example, from research, what's most important to people who are closer to death: comfort, feeling unburdened, and unburdening to those they love, existential peace, and a sense of wonderment and spirituality, sensuous aesthetic gratification, where in a moment, in an instant, we are rewarded for just being. So much of it comes down to loving our time by way of the senses, by way of the body, the very thing doing the living and the dying. As long as we have our senses, even just one, we have at least the possibility of accessing what makes us feel human, connected. Imagine the ripples of this notion for the millions of people living and dying with dementia, primal sensorial delights. That say the things we don't have words for, impulses that make us stay present. No need for a past or a future. If teasing unnecessary suffering out of the system was our first design cue, then tending to dignity by way of the senses, by way of the body, the aesthetic realm is design cue number two. We need to lift our sights, to set our sights on well-being. That life can become, and health and health care can become about making life more wonderful rather than just less horrible. This gets right at the distinction between a disease-centered and a patient or human-centered model of care. And here is where caring becomes a creative, generative, even playful act. Consider every major compulsory effort it takes to be human. The need for food is birth cuisine. The need for shelters given rise to architecture, the need for cover, fashion, and for being subjected to the clock. Well, we invented music. So, since dying is a necessary part of life, what might we create with this fact? I am in no way suggesting that we take a light approach to dying or that we mandate any particular way of dying. There are mountains of sorrow that cannot move, and one way or another, we will all kneel there. Rather, I am asking we make space, physical, psychic room, to allow life to play itself all the way out, so that rather than getting out of the way, aging and dying can become a process of crescendo through to the end.